Jesus said, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. in Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms The hymn, Hark, Hark, My Soul, Angelic Sounds Are Swelling. Stop. 
Please be seated for the reading of the scripture lesson. Good evening, brother. Good evening, brothers and sisters. The lesson is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 to 16. Chapter 3, verses 8 to 16. Indeed, I count everything as Christ, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as refuge, in order that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, based on law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that if possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be thus minded, and if in anything you are otherwise minded, God will reveal that also unto you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. The word of the Lord. We will now have the reading of the eulogy by Mr. Erskine Sobers, and this will be followed by a tribute by Dr. Lane Welch. Through all the changing scenes of life, in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. This evening, I will attempt to take a little bit of, from each one of you, each one of you, your heart, and use my tongue to express it. Moreover, as press would want, I will be brief. And as some of you who might have encountered him, you know when press says he wanted something, he wanted it done. So I will accede to his wishes. I will also want, on behalf of a very select group of us who took the Connell Town School bus back in the 60s and 70s, to express our heart, the real feelings we feel about someone like Press, who was part of what we were growing up. It was a special time. Uh, the whole journey from Connelltown to Bridgetown and back meant so much to us. It was a time when we all created bonds, we made friends, and I mean, that was a time of several schools. So many of you in here will know about Paragon, about the community high, about co-op. That press went to press, and his sister they went to co-op. Press best buddy, uh, Ad Sue, is probably watching and listening over in New York. He, he was a co-op man from Crab Hill. You had Daylights, who is living in, in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Abbott, who just retired from the police force. It was a special time, and that time, that journey molded all of us to who we are today. It made press who he is, a loving, personable man who could say the right thing. He could also at times say the wrong thing, even when he meant to say the right thing. Uh, press, press was a special person. Uh, and I really should put something to rest here as to how he got the name Press. It wasn't that he was a newspaper, nothing of the sort. Uh, his, his good friend, as who was at co-op, reminded us, there was a man who was a baker next to the school. And one day, uh, one of his Press school friends looked at him and said, 
The man's name was actually Press. He looked at him and said, Ma, you look just like Press. And the name stuck with him until this day in his well into his 70th year. Roll Woodville Phillips. And I'm sure most of you are hearing the Woodville for the very first time. Roll Woodville Phillips was born in Connelltown, St. Lucie, to Herman and Violet Phillips. Roll was one of four children. He was the only boy. He was also the third, ch the third child. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I get kind of overcome when I, when I think about press, you know, growing up. Everything that I, 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 wrote, I wrote, it just is blown away by the thoughts of the person, the person that he, he was. Press the kind of person who would call you at the right time and have the right thing to say about a situation over which he, he didn't even know. He just would have been the sort of person who, who was there for you. Uh, when he went into the second part of his life when he, he opened the driving school, I, I remember my, both my sons learned, learned to drive with, with, with Press. And to this day, they like to talk about the fact that when they made a mistake, Press would stop the van and tap them and look at them and say, Ma, you want to mash up my van, or what? <laughs> and everyone I've ever spoken to who press taught to drive said that was his mantra. You knew if you had a good lesson, if you got through it, without being asked whether you were seeking to do any damage to his vehicle. I mean, this, this is also a time of reflection, recollection, and really of catching up for so many of us who grew up in that, in that time, uh, from Hope Road to Cornell Town, where press, through North Tumblin to Cornell Town, through Greenwich's to Crab Hill. Crab Hill, which is, I mean, to, to those of us from St. Lucie's, made up of so many villages, from Salmon's to Avis Town, to Coles Cave, to Archer's Bay, to Stroud Bay, to Content, all of which made up that particular area of Crab Hill. But that was what those, this whole journey through into Broomfield, to Checker Hall, Sutherland Hill, right through to Six Mines, this we all formed a common bond. And truth be told, it was a bond that we had to have because there were two school buses leaving St. Lucie. And you had to catch the school bus. So when Chocola told me, his daughter said that her father was always punctual. I remarked, you had to be punctual. If you didn't catch the bus, and you attempted to catch the passenger bus, Rocker or one of the, the conductors would look at you and say, you all know the got school bus. And you couldn't dare get onto the bus, so you had to catch the school bus. On the evenings, coming in the other direction, it was the, 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 the bus out of the... Most people don't, probably can't even remember, there was a bus stand in front of the Red Fusion. And our bus went there. And God forbid an evening that the rain fell like it fell on Thursday it was. The bus stand was flooded. And you had to take tow to get into the, into, into the bus. But again, these were things that helped to form our character. Things like, in those early days, you, 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 you knew who was having the first girlfriend or boyfriend because that was when you held somebody's hand for the first time. And the, the, the relationship was consummated if you happened to get into the bus and you hold a seat for that person. But oh, those were the things that made us who we are to this day as, as we grew up and some of us got cars like Press's Press got a vehicle and you were coming through Spike Stone at night and you saw Graham Stevenson from the Hope Road. You know you had, and Graham was part of a group who worked at Sandy Lane. You had to pick up Graham and Graham would have somebody with him who was from Pike Corner. But you can't leave a man in Pike Corner when you bring a man to the Hope Road and they then got somebody, you got to drop in Crab Hill. But again, these were the things that made Press and us who came out of the 60s and 70s, that the bond that we had is, a, is, is really an unbreakable bond. There's so many people who I know who would have loved to have been here this evening, but so many of them have traveled. I mean, people who grew up with us like Saunders and the Graves is from the Hope Road and uh, Seabrook Johnson, his, his sisters and so on who, who, who live abroad. These were special times and press was always there. I remember when we decided we would start a cricket team in the Hope Road. 
there was this big passage all full of rocks and press was a founder member we press was there to help nail the wood nail the, the nails into the piece of wood to sc scrape the all those rocks off that field to make it into a cricket field and in turn he became our opening batsman I'm not going to say he was competent but he was committed and that was all we wanted in those days I, I, I always remember one year we were without a wicket keeper and Graham Stevenson our then captain said my press can wicket keep at that time we had two of the fastest bowlers in the BCL Irwin Bowen and Philip Roach and press wicket keep again I'll say not competently but with full commitment most times at the end of the innings the boys were more than the other than everybody at his core but you knew you had a man for the season and that was press again you talk about a cycle for time press would be one of the first guys up there on mornings to help to prepare the wicket right back to Cornell town and be back before one o'clock and looking around one over these men don't plan to play cricket they were over and this was just the man he was but again i'll say he was a man of our times we look around and i mean as the, there's a term history can be a seductive liar but in this particular case when i tell you the history of the man what i say is true he was a committed husband a diligent father he loved not only his daughter he loved his wife's daughter he loved his the grandchildren there are two children from his from his uh his cousin his cousin who had died and press took them on board as if they were his children and that was the nature of the man when press went to work at the at the qh at that time i i i used to be a banking and i remember i i was not only banking but i was working in loans and people would appear at the at the bank and say that i want to speak to mr sobers yeah can i help you roll send me <laughs> no i want to explain something here where we come from in st lucy when i say i send you it means i send you because i trust you so there was no doubt that a roll sent you and we did a loan for you that not only were you going to pay but if you didn't pay, you had to answer the roll. So it, it was a no-brainer for me. Roll, send you. And this has remained with most of us throughout our lives. As some of us has gone into, have gone into positions of, you know, of slightly more authority and so on. If someone turns up at your job and they say, my Lila send me, or Glenn send me, what am I supposed to do? You've been sent by somebody who I've known as we would say from small teeth days from the time we were all sharing i had to respond but again i'll say these were the times that shaped us all that made not only barbados but i mean the wider diaspora those of us who have left and gone abroad have made us into the people we are we, we are a special people and if i were to lapse into my st lucy talk we are special people out of st lucy I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't do it as well as I should. What I will say now in closing is that Roll has disembarked from the Cornerstone School bus. And he's left us, his friends, his colleagues, and his relatives, the poor for his passing. But we must all remember that life is a very fragile gift. And sometimes it can be taken from us far too soon. In Rawls passing, that is all cherish the time that we still have with our loved ones and our friends. And most of all, let us hold on to the memories we are still creating together. The golden evening brightens in the west. Soon, soon, to the faithful warriors comes their rest. Sweet is the calm of paradise, the blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. What else can I say? I think you may have heard it all. That is wrong.
It's painful, however, to stand here a pleasure to be part of the celebration of the life of Rawl. I'm just as old as Rawl, but I didn't meet him none before 1973. When I came back as a young upstart medical student, that was when I met Rawl. We were friends, good buddies from then onwards. This is going to be a tribute and also a little part of extension eulogy. When I came back, I had a nice afro, which I treasured. And when I saw Rawl's afro, I thought I had a flop. Well kept and all that. Look at me now, look at us now. Age has done its job. No afro. Roll. That I say roll. A good friend for a long time. Member of the QA Sports Club. And a true member. A vibrant member. That club, actually, I don't know how many years it is, but at one time it was almost going down, dilapidated. We got together. Raul was in the foremost, along with us. But our two cents that we had, appealed to the director, Mr. James Williams, and through the small group, that is where this club has its name. QEH Sports Club, James Williams Club. The QEH was a meeting place for all the Sunder, especially the employees of the hospital. Now, the operators used to always come over there and have their drinks too. I mean, soft drinks mostly while they're working. And I say this because it was good and it was bad. We over there having our fun, playing dominoes and enjoying good fellowship. And the phone will ring. And it seems as though sometimes we all knew it was for him. But when the phone rang, everyone would say, not here, not here. So before the not here came out, Raul was through the back, by Nutrition Center, up, that back gate is closed now, and be in his office. So, where was Raul? He had to have gone to the bathroom, because it was so quick. But we had a great fellowship in that club. Raul was a fierce competitor, especially in the in-house games and never, never like to lose. Um, Raul also had a, an integral part in the QH team. He played, and let me tell you, the QH hospital is the team that realizes the dress code of Domino's. You may, not disagree, you may agree or not disagree, but that is true. And we won many a cup for our tournament to Raul. When we came to the parade, Raul will come around. That pants is gray, not black. Belt, you don't have a black belt. You don't have this. And he was an integral part in our being. He was a great man, a loved man. He loved dominoes and enjoyed every format of the game. Every format of the game. I will mention here now some of his partners. He had many partners, but I can only mention a few. Turney, Cedric. Boyce, 
even myself. And last of all, I mentioned Lewis. Now, indeed, Rob was a peaceful man, a quiet man, loved peace. But I think Lewis drove him over the edge. I've never seen him quarrel so much. Not argument, but display such um, behavior, not bad behavior, but to Domino's, because he loved Domino's so, so much that when Lewis never responded to him, he will bring out the, bring the worst of all. He was kind. Very, very kind. He would always look up for each of us. Now, when we play dominoes, we always stay there. And if it's midnight and you live in Timbuktu, we always take you there and then go home. Just a friend, a friend. For those who don't know, as you mentioned just now, he was the driving instructor. Par excellence. He didn't teach me. That's why I'm not as good a driver. <laughs> However, he taught my kids. They're excellent. And everyone I knew, I sent to Raul, they came back and told me, fantastic, fantastic. As I said, a great man Raul was. We will miss him. We will miss his participation. Raul, may you rest in peace. We will say this again at the grave side. At the grave side a how. A how. And we know what that means. That is Raul trademark in Domino's. And he was a great, great friend. Buddy, rest in peace, Rob. Thank you. The hymn, Thy way not mine, O Lord.
This evening I speak to the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. Words from the 13th verse of the third chapter of the epistle of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Philippians chapter 3, the 13th verse. My brothers and sisters, what an experience St. Paul had when he met his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on that Damascus road. For St. Luke tells us in the Acts of the Apostles that St. Paul or Saul was on his way to Damascus to bind the Christians there in chains and bring them back to Jerusalem to put in prison. Because St. Paul, his aim was to destroy the followers of Jesus. But while on that road, something great and marvelous happened to that man called Paul. There he met Jesus Christ on that road. And we are told that a bright light shone upon him. And Paul fell to the ground. That experience, my brothers and sisters, changed Paul. That experience gave Paul a new life. And that experience even gave Paul a new name. For some, from Saul, he became Paul. And after that experience, St. Paul realized that the Jesus he met on that road had a vision and a purpose for his life. He realized that Jesus had something great and wonderful for him to do. And knowing that Jesus had a, a vision and a purpose for his life, Paul was determined not to look back, but to look to the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. For St. Paul, he could boldly say that his one desire was to know Jesus Christ and the power of the resurrection. For as I said, Paul realized that his life was now wrapped up. That his life was now grounded and rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knew that if you were in Jesus Christ, that you could not be the same. He knew that if your life was grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would be a new being, a new creature. And so he could write the words, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. If anyone is in Christ, the old has to pass away. And he says, Behold, the new shall come. Paul was given a new life. And he was determined to spend the remainder of his life in Christ Jesus. 
He was determined to spend the remainder of his life working for the one who threw him down on that Damascus road. The one who picked him up and gave him a new life. Paul was determined not to look back. Not to look back on his old life. Not to look back on all his achievement because he said all that he had gained in the past. He counted them as refuse. As nothing for the sake of knowing Jesus Christ. And so he could pen the words forgetting what lies behind. And pressing yes training forward to what lies ahead. My brothers and sisters, I wish to say to you this evening that just as Jesus Christ had a vision and a purpose for Paul's life, he also has a vision and a purpose for your life. And you need or you have to acknowledge that Jesus has something good in mind for you. You have to come to the understanding that this life that you are living at present is not your life. I want you to understand that. The life you are living now is not your life. Though you may get on and behave as if you made yourself, it is not your life. I want you to understand that this life that you are living belongs to God. It is God's life. And God has given it to you or has loaned it to you for a period of time. How long? You do not know. And you do not know because you are not in full control of your life. God is in control. And when God sees it fit, he will call you away from this world but in the meantime that time that God has allotted to you he wants you to use it in a good way he wants you to use it in his service and in the service of your fellow man and all I'm saying to you that God wants you to live a good life God wants you to do good. He wants you to acknowledge him as your God. And in acknowledging him. To hand your life over to him. And allow him to have full control. And brothers and sisters. I say to when you hand your life over to God. When you make that decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't look back at the old things that you had. Those things that you used to do, you let go. You no longer want to go on doing that or doing them. But we have some people who want the best of two worlds. They want to hold on to the past. And hold on to the future or the present. They want to give one hand to the devil and put the next hand in the hand of God. It doesn't work that way. For my Bible tells me, and I believe it tells you the same thing, that if you're not for God, you're what? You're against him. My Bible and the Bible that you read tells us that we cannot serve two masters. We have to hold on to one and let go of the other one. But we want to hold on to the, the past and the present as well. It can't work that way. If you, your life is in Jesus... then you have to forget the things that St. Paul says that lies behind. 
and press forward. There is a prize for you. And that prize is eternal life. Paul realized that. He realized that he had to live his life in Jesus and he could say for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. For he knew that if he remained living, he had Jesus Christ in his life. And he knew that if he died, he would gain that great reward awaiting him in heaven. And believe you me, brothers and sisters, there is something good awaiting you in heaven. But if you are to attain it, then you must make the decision to live your life in Jesus Christ. And if you live your life in Jesus Christ, you can't go wrong. We go wrong because we want to live as we like. You can't live as you like and then expect to get to heaven. The Bible has laid down certain standards that we are to follow. And I love how St. Peter puts it. He says that we need to lead lives of righteousness, lives of holiness, lives of godliness. We need to live looking to Jesus. We need to live praising our God. For you know, God is good. And God has done great things for each and every one. There's nobody in here this evening who can honestly say that God has not done anything for them. You may not be serving God. You may not even love God. But he still does good things for you. Who woke you up this morning? You wake up yourself? Huh? Who put breath in your body? You put it in yourself? Who provides for you, you provide for yourself. Who clothes you, God. You know that lovely hymn we used to sing at school? You know what it says? The food I eat, the clothes I wear, are all bestowed by thee. You, know, you used to sing that song? Huh? And you really believe what it is saying? All of the saying that God provides for each and every one of us. He sends his rain on the just as well as the unjust. Whether or not you love God, he provides for you. And that is the type of God we serve. A loving God. A God who loves each and every one of us. A God who loves us so much that he was prepared to send his only begotten son to suffer, to bleed, and to die on that old rugged cross. An emblem of suffering and shame. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the Lord has done great things for us. You know, there's another song that says, The Lord has done great things for me, we all. I am glad. And if you're really glad, you would praise God. You will show him that you appreciate what he has done for you. And I believe that the best way you can show God your appreciation is by serving him, by loving him, by worshiping him. Yes, my brothers and sisters, there's something good laid up in heaven for you. Paul knew that. And that is why he could boldly say, forgetting what lies behind and pressing forward to what lies ahead. Pressing forward to the goal of the price of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. That should be our aim in this life. To press forward. So that at the end, rather than we stand before the judgment seat of God, so that we will hear well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Into, into the joy of your father.
And you know if you hear that, where are you going? Huh? You know if you hear that, you, 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 where, where are you going? Heaven, right? You don't want to hear depart from me. For if you hear depart from me, don't stop and beg for another chance. You know, you have all the chances now. Don't tell God, give me another chance. Or, that, or don't tell God, but you know God, my mother used to go to church. So because my mother used to go to church, give me a chance. You got to go to church for yourself. Huh? You got to serve God. For, your mother can't serve God for you. Your mother can die and leave something in the will for you. But she can't leave a mansion in heaven for you. She can't leave a place in heaven for you. You got to work for that place yourself. So it doesn't depend on your mother, your father, your husband, your grandmother. You got to tell God about yourself. You give, have to give God an account of your stewardship of your life in this world. Brothers and sisters, St. Paul, knowing that there was that crown of righteousness laid up for him. That crown of righteousness he spoke to young Timothy about. He knew that there was that crown laid up. And he said, not for him alone, but for all those who love God's appearing. Brothers and sisters, there's something good in store for you. And Jesus, he wants you to receive it. And I hope you want to receive it too. And if you want to receive it, then you will live the type of life which will enable you to receive it. A life wrapped up and grounded and rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I say to you, in the words of St. Paul, forget your old life. Forget the past. Forget the things you used to do before and press forward to the price of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. So this evening, as we give God thanks for the life of our brother Raul, and I believe that Raul knew Jesus Christ. And I'm sure that if he made himself right, and I believe he had time to, we, don't, we can't judge. We like to judge people, you know. We need to look at our own lives. I believe that he had time. And if he make his call and election sure, he will hear the words, well done. He will join the saints of God in glory everlasting. You live so that you too will join them over on the other shore. And so this evening, as I said, I pray that God would have mercy on his soul and grant him a place with all his saints in glory everlasting. And now to all his sorrowing relatives and friends, I extend to you deepest sympathy, and I pray that the good Lord will comfort and strengthen you as you now prepare to live your life without the presence of your loved one. May God bless you. May God give you that strength to carry on. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, that light that shall shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray.
O God, the make and redeemer of all mankind, grant us of your servant Raul Woodville and all the faithful departed the sure benefit of your son's saving partial and glorious resurrection that in the last day when you gather up all things in Christ we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give your heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who haven't finished your course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, Raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him and at the resurrection receive that blessing, which your well-beloved son should then pronounce, Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Grant, O Lord, to all our bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life of those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to him, O Lord, let light perpetual shine upon him. Be ye and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory, if I see it in joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and match his dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. We shall now all stand and sing the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing, and during the singing of this hymn, a collection will be taken. Angel Voices Ever Singing.
In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Hence, who so says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shot he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins. And at the last, I will let us not fall away from you. Ensure uncertain hope of resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother, Raul Woodville. And we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother, Raul Woodville, and we ourselves, may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen.
when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound.
test in test. The Lord be with you. Quiet, please. Just give me a moment, please. The Lord be with you. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Thank God very much and blessings be upon you.